Welcome back to episode number 6 of this tutorial series on Raspberry Pi for complete beginners. You can find the series playlist in the description. And let's get started. In this quick episode, you will learn about the GPIO panel on the Raspberry Pi and how the GPIOs work. This quick overview will be super useful for the following. Here is the complete pinout for the Raspberry Pi 4 but it's also the same as for the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Raspberry Pi 2. The GPIOs haven't changed with the latest evolutions of the Pi. So, as you can see, we have some pins in black which represent the ground. All those pins are connected together. Then we have what we call power pins, two pins for 3.3 volts and two pins for 5 volts. And then the GPIOs in orange. Each GPIO has a number and that's the number you will use in your Python code to interact with the GPIO. Quick reminder here, the GPIOs are 3.3 volt pins and not 5 volt pins. That is very important. So now how to control a GPIO? Well, it's pretty simple. You first have to set up the GPIO either as an input pin or as an output pin. You will use input when you want to read data, for example, with a push button, and you will use output when you want to write data, for example, with an LED. Once you have set the mode of the GPIO, you can use the GPIO. If it is set as input, you can read a value, and the value has only two states, high and low. High and low correspond to the voltage which was read from the pin. If the voltage is high enough and close to 3.3 volt, then the value that you will read will be high. Otherwise, it will be low. And if you have set the GPIO as output, you can write a value high or low. For an LED, if you want to power on the LED, you will set the GPIO state as high and if you want to power off the LED, you will set the GPIO state as low. Now, if we come back to the Raspberry Pi pinout image, you can see that the GPIOs are not set in any specific order and some numbers are missing. That is totally okay and it is nothing to worry about, but you will just have to be extra careful when finding the GPIO number corresponding to the pin number. As you can see, we also have two reserved pins in grey that you should not use and two pins in green that can be used for UART communication, which we will not cover in this course. Some of the pins can also have an alternate function. For example, GPIOs 2 and 3 can also be used for I2C communication. And the one with the pink label for the SPI communication. Again, that's more advanced stuff and we will stick with standard GPIO functions for now. Alright, that's the end of this episode. If you found it useful, you will definitely like my full complete course on Raspberry Pi named Raspberry Pi for Beginners. This course contains 10 hours of hands-on video lessons. You can find the link in the description. Thank you for watching, see you in the course or in the next tutorial of the series.